Hi everybody and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. All right, I'm gonna be working outside the garage today. It is a cold day. As you can see, we have fog up here in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, it is cold. Got a problem with the Jeep. That's what we're gonna be working on today. So recently the engine light came on. And as you know, to find out what that engine light means, all you gotta do is get a little OBD2 Bluetooth adapter, which you can get anywhere for 20 bucks. In the Jeep, you have the OBD2 connector right at the bottom driver's side, right at the bottom, right here. You just stick this in, lights on. Then all you gotta do is get the free app, which is Torque Light, right here. You install this on your smartphone, click on that. I agree. Now your phone is gonna connect up to your Bluetooth adapter, which will then allow you to access the computer of your Jeep. Okay, with the Torque Light app, you can see lots of information about your engine. Uh, you can get speed, load, uh, fuel injectors, all sorts of information. But today, right now, I wanna find out what that engine light means. First thing we'll go to is settings, and the first category is fault codes. Please wait, please wait, please wait, please wait. Okay, show a pending fault code is PO128, PO128. Now, if you click on that, it tells you that it's the coolant thermostat, coolant temperature below thermostat regulating temperature. Okay, that's interesting. You can also go to the web here, take you straight there do a search on the web for that code and as you can see it gives you more information on that okay after doing a little bit of investigation on the web I discovered that it could be one of two things for the PO128 and that could be a stuck open thermostat or a faulty coolant temperature sensor so if your coolant thermostat uh, is open all the time that means that your car your engine is going to run cold and you're gonna see that on your temperature gauge, for example, that it'll be lower than normal. And also, when you put on the heat, you won't get much heat at all because, of course, the engine's running cold. So, of course, I checked my temperature gauge and the engine's been running for a while and it is a normal operating temperature. And also, I check for heat. Now, Jeeps are known to be good for heat, that's for sure. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, nice and warm, nice and warm. So that suggests, suggests, suggests that the thermostat is operating normally. So why do I have this engine code? Now with Torque Light, you can add a display uh, as there's tons of ones you can add here. For example, 0 to 60 mile per hour time, ambient air temperature, uh, trip, baromic pressure, engine coolant temperature. Okay, now this will give me a display. That's in case, say, this gauge is not working properly. You could always just add this, 81 degrees centigrade. Okay, given that uh, the car is heating up and the temperature appears to be normal, I think the thermostat is fine. So it's most likely it's the coolant temperature sensor. And so today, that's what I'm going to replace. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, our coolant temperature sensor has arrived from Amazon. It's a good idea to get a high quality sensor, something from Jeep because uh, you don't want to have to do this over and over again. <laughs> and this is what the little guy looks like. Now sometimes when you get a coolant sensor it already comes with a sealant on the threads. If it doesn't, like this one hasn't, you should put your own thread sealant, either uh, tape or a liquid type of thread sealant. So I'm going to put some on right inner fender off but I've now learned that I sort of made a mistake 
I took off one bolt. One, two, three, four, five, six pins. And these were really hard to get out, really hard. And then I sort of pried it off of these guys here. You have basically plastic rivets, one, two, and three. Plastic rivets, and I sort of just pried it off, but that means it's not gonna go on here again. These rivets look like this. And they look like they can be pried off, and you can, but then they're not usable again. So I'm gonna have to buy new rivets, and I hear that these are expensive. $8 each, something like that. And maybe a special tool to get these on, but maybe I can get these on. So for now, uh, I have sort of wrecked these three rivets. So there is a better way. Basically, you loosen off your liner, like I did, but you don't take it off the rivets, and you get access to these bolts. One, two, and three. Also bolt here, also bolt here. Then the whole fender, the whole fender can come off and electrical connector disconnect. The whole fender will come off. So that might've been the easier way to do it without wrecking these expensive rivets. So um, just a word of warning, you can get the inner liner off completely, but you're gonna have to redo these rivets. Inner liner's off. Now, as you can see, we have access. We can actually reach and I can touch. This is what we're trying to get to. This is where all this effort is for. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is undo this connector, pull up. It's got a double lock, pull up, push in, and pull off. Oh, luckily, that was actually easy. Now we need a 19 mil to take this out. Now, once we start taking this out, uh, coolant is gonna flow out. So you should have a bucket underneath the vehicle. Okay, it's not on too tight. As you can see, I've already got it loose. Out goes the old. Oh. And as you can see, not a lot of liquid coming out. I thought more would come out. Now we can compare the old and the new. You can see that they're virtually the same. We'll just put this right back in where it came from. But in the new, coolant sensor is going in. It's got a crush washer. We'll just tighten this up. Now you just want it tight enough to tighten and crush the crush washer. That's all, not too tight. Okay, that's nice and snug. Now we'll just put the electrical connector back on. Should click, and then we put the lock on by pushing down. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start up the Jeep and check for leaks before I put all the inner liner and everything else back together. Okay, I've had the engine running for a while, and as you can see, there is no leaks. That's good news. And the engine temperature is exactly normal. Everything appears to be working just fine. So now that we appear to have solved the problem, let's get rid of the fault code. Okay, fault codes, uh, clear log faults, and okay. All right, the job is done. 
and the coolant sensor has been replaced on my beautiful 2014 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Man, oh man, that looks great in the sun. Now I just gotta clean it up. All right, thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time.